What's going on? And welcome to Q&A with PK, PR, and PG. Pastor Randy's favorite song. We were actually debating when Pastor Randy wasn't here. We thought it would be cool to do a video where Pastor Kim and I try to teach Pastor Randy different modern dance moves. Yeah, that would that would be very interesting. No, <laughs> would it? He included me in teaching. <laughs> no. As well as I sing. No. Uh, Thanks for joining us for Q and A, where we answer the deep philosophical questions that you've come up with while you are watching TV in the middle of the night with a Cheeto crumbs down your one sock half off. We only got three deep ones today, so if you got a deep one. Throw it in there. Yes, today is a good day that if um, the watching audience has questions, yes. we could probably field quite a few. Field some. Everyone is quite busy with Easter. Mm -hmm. um, but color, I, color. You're not that busy, though, are you? No, I'm just relaxed, coloring you. those eggs, man. It's trying to it wears, find, it wears on you. Trying you to know. find something to do with my time. <laughs> just kind of bored. So thanks for joining us. I up those stairs a minute ago. I'm like, I did. don't hurt yourself. No, I'd be all right. It's you, fine. you ran up the stairs. You shouldn't yeah, do that. I walked almost eight miles yesterday. Oh, wow. Are you supposed to be doing that much? You know, it's hard to say, Ross. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> um, well, they actually said, I think if I said this blow earlier. blow something like that, you'll know. No, it looks, he said, he said my swelling was surprisingly good. My range of motion was impressive. He said I was a month ahead of where I should be. Wow. What? Wow. He's impressive. He's, he's an impressive he's fellow. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, an impressive ankle break. <laughs> <laughs> if I was impressive, I would not have broken my leg to start out with. <laughs> but good. Let us know where you're watching you're from. Non-compliant. Uh, and I am. Impressive. I am. That's what I've been told is I am a non-compliant yeah. patient. But but my heart is in the right place. So let us know if you're watching where you're watching from, and we will, in fact, start by inviting you to Easter service. It's going to be incredible. Come early. Doors are going to open a half an hour ahead of time. Love to get you there and uh, plan. I, th I think if you show up at your normal time, you will probably not end up sitting in the auditorium. So, which is it's going, to be, it's going to be a great experience over here, but if you'd like to um, come early, make it easier on an auditorium host. I keep hitting this tree here. No, that's this is, this, <laughs> Faith said it a little tight. <laughs> 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 how many how many seats are we setting up on this side? Three hundred and seventy. Okay. What if there's three hundred and seventy one? Then they oh, will sit on a, a a couch. No. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we're, okay. We bought. So so that's kind of maxing that space out. We have more chairs in the auditorium. I think two hundred and one more chairs than we've ever had in the auditorium. That's good. Mm. So. Because I suspect there will be. 201 more people. More people. And then we'll have, we, we bought more chairs, and then we bought more chairs again. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. and, and the reality is we will have to go back to three Easter services next year, as well as three Christmas services. So... Uh, He's talking very quietly. Isn't so this is Pastor Randy. Pastor Randy. This <laughs> is <laughs> night. Turn <laughs> him uh, uh, up. Turn him up a little bit. Crank uh, him the jam. Do we have anybody with us? Uh, there's people there. No one. Not Jane me. Walter. Hello, FCF Church from NC. Well, hello, Miss Jane. See, that's what happens when you miss a Thursday. There's actually a, ch a huge chunk watching, though. Oh, are they're they? just not commenting. Why are you guys all being so shy? Stop being shy. <laughs> Chastise you into engagement. <laughs> Beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> well, maybe we, should, maybe we should do a question. Oh, yeah, Ross is watching from Middletown Ross. and Sandy. Thank you, Ross, for letting us know. He, he sent it through Messenger, though. I don't know this why. This is Natalie Watts. When are you coming to see us? When are we going to see you? June. When did June? Oh, she's coming again? Yeah, yeah man. Oh, man. That, we're do, that's we're amazing. We're that do go-karts this time. So Maddie Greathouse is here. What's up? Susan Dorochis. Am I saying that right? Desrochis? I think it's an a, a Italian name. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Here from work. Yeah, All right. Man. Why don't you fire a question off, Pastor Kim? Okay. Well, we're going to start um, not real deep. More go, service okay. but Keep Easter. Mm -hmm. So someone wants to know, and I believe this is like a mom, little kid. So okay. what are your thoughts on Easter decorations with bunnies and Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff? Um, I, I don't have any problem with any of that at all. I think as long as there's a clear expr explanation 
that's just a fun thing we do. It has nothing to do with Easter. If, if, if the child is old enough to understand the actual Easter events, it's critical to, to explain that, but this is just something fun we, we do at this time of year. That, that's the way I would yeah. handle it. But there's no harm. I mean, you know, there are some people that take radical positions that you're, you know, you're practicing paganism or something like that, but I, I don't see that. You know. Well, you guys do. No, you could be a practicing house. pagan. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, do, we do egg hunts for the kids. and yeah. so and, you are a pagan. But there's no question in our home what the real meaning of yeah. we also at Christmas season we get a tree I know some are opposed so to that so you are a pagan yeah, pretty much the feast this of Saturnalia is, and Bacchus this is, Bacchus worshiper you are <laughs> <laughs> so I think as long as there's clear explanation for why we do it it's a it's a, a fun time to get together just like any other holiday yeah. but yeah I, 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 that's what I think too so I'm not a pagan um, not so much no. <laughs> at least this is not the evidence that I'm a pagan a blood drinking no, no. blood drinking heathen yeah. blood <laughs> drinking devil worshiper you're yeah. not quite there no. <laughs> hey, Natalie says you're going to be at church on the 7th what, what? what month is that it, like this April the, the 7th, 7th would be next not this Sunday coming but the following Sunday do you mean April Natalie what? What? <laughs> I what? hope not because I'm in Arkansas. You're in Arkansas? Well, that means we're eclipse. watching the That eclipse. means we're doing we're gonna do go karts without you. Oh man <laughs> Yeah. Hi Miss Kathleen, how are you? I didn't tell you guys this yet, but we're we're going away. We're you going away. Where are you going, man? Man, yeah. we're gonna go to the Creation Museum. We're gonna go wow. to the Ark Encounter. Yeah, okay. man. So I'm, I'm gonna leave music that weekend. No, no, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back for Sunday. I'll, I'll, I'm going so I don't get to leave music that weekend. Nope. I sat down, with, I sat down with Leo yesterday and said, Leo, I'm gonna. I'm gonna April. Need. She says April. Wow. Yes. Well, that's next week. That's yes, next week. like ten days. Wow. I can't wait to see you. It's gonna be awesome. Man, that is exciting. And the fourteenth. Well, I'll be there the fourteenth. I'll right. be there the fourteenth. So you gotta get. Wow. All right. Message me, Natalie, or text me, so we. We can set up a time to do the, the carts of goat. <laughs> All right. I like that. Hi, Holly. <laughs> I like that. Paula, she's awesome. Her and Sergio are part of our marriage ministries and are incredible people. A blessing. Yeah. Miss Jamie, you don't know who she is, Pastor Kim. Uh, uh, yeah, what's her? Who? She awesome sermon familiar? last. Oh, let her finish. Don't cut her I'm off. My cousin finish. Don't cut there's her no, off. Uh, there's no, uh, what do you call it? I don't know. Bias. No, no she's not biased. She's, she's not, not biased. biased. She's biased. None. <laughs> uh, well, you got a lot of people on now, so no, no. now that we've we told them that we're question. heathens and we we uh, <laughs> dye eggs and yeah. hide them and we do it. Man. What's the origin <laughs> of the hiding of the eggs? Yeah. Oh, Anybody wow. know? Throw in the chat if you know why we hide the eggs. Yeah. I just think that's of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. If you just got on, yeah, <laughs> he just said I'm the kidding. opposite. <laughs> uh, all right, go ahead. Okay. Fire the next question. Okay. So someone, this I think this is, no, that's from Ross. We had a discussion during our group this week about the second coming and what will happen to little kids. So I was wondering if either of you mm. could provide biblical passages. So second coming of Christ, there's little kids. Buckle up. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I guess we're referring I, to the I, resurrection. I, yeah, I, I mean, the second coming of Christ, which is clearly Matthew 24, verse 29 through 31, after the tribulation, <laughs> um, Jesus said it himself, it's not me, it is also called the first resurrection. You have it talked about in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 52. You have it talked about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses um, 13 through 18. And then in Revelation chapter 20, uh, once again, you have the first resurrection. So that, that's at the return of Christ. So I guess the question is, is if a child is under the age of accountability, and I'm just assuming, I might not be answering the right question. If a child is under the age of accountability, let's say it's a three-year-old child, and Jesus returns and the first resurrection takes place, does that child, and, and listen to the word I'm going to use, mm. does that child get raptured up oh. with the living mm. followers of Jesus. What is that word? After the tribulation when he comes mm. in the first resurrection. What is, the, what is the word for rapture in the Greek? Harpazo. Harpazo. Yeah. <laughs> for those uh, which count. simply means you're you're taking taken up alive. Paul says it happens in the twinkling of an eye. So I guess the question is, is would a child who is under the age of accountability, would they be uh, rec rece receiving their resurrection body at the return of Christ, and, and my answer would be under the age of accountability, that would be true. Could it be conceivable 
that someone we would call a child uh, might not, but might be allowed to live to, um, to, to, to live through the beginning, at least, of the millennium, that could be true, too. We have to understand, there, there, there are going to be people that are non-Christians that are going to survive the tribulation. About half the world's population is going to survive, and they will be allowed to enter into the millennial reign. So that gives them a great chance to turn to Christ again. But uh, that, I, I hope we're answering the right question. Well, I've got a natural follow-up question. I bet someone out there is thinking, which is... Um, what do you mean by the age of accountability, and what is the age of accountability? Uh, the age of accountability is a concept that Christians have believed is taught in Scripture for a long time, but it's not specific. For example, when the Israelites were supposed to go into the Promised Land, Numbers 13 and 14, but they balked, they were fearful, well, God judged all that were age 20 and up. Mm -hmm. So in that particular case, he didn't count anybody as accountable, even though they may have been a part of the uh, fear-oriented rebellion. David is, is a little closer to the subject that, that gives us a, maybe a little more balance. Okay, so maybe David, uh, you know, he commits you know, adultery with Bathsheba. She has a child. The child is very sick. He's praying, 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 fasting. And then finally the child dies. He says, well, the child... Uh, will not be with me, but I will certainly go to be with the child. So this tells us, David being a prophet, he knew the child was, was we would use the term saved, went to be with the Lord, so the child was under the age of accountability. The age of accountability is the idea that there is a time in our growth uh, cycle where we, we knowingly do evil. Right. Yeah. You watch little kids, little two, two three, three-year-old kids, man. They're very evil. They're, they're like little, little evil midget wrestlers, you know, honking each other, stealing each other's stuff, Mom, Mom, Mom. pulling Mom. each other's hair. You know? Little, little wrestlers. midget wrestlers. Yeah, I probably said so many bad things. <laughs> You have to understand, I grew up in the 50s, man, and they used to have midget wrestling on okay, TV. Okay, we're going to keep moving. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. no, they, but they called it. It was okay to call it midget wrestling. Then. And then I'm pretty close to midget. I can talk about these things. <laughs> <laughs> Nephilim, we, we are yeah. not allowed. No, no. But, um, awesome. you know, so, so the idea is that children certainly do evil things prior to being aware, aware and accountable yeah. but there is that that season where now they are knowingly doing evil and, and i can kind of remember that in my own life not the first specific step but some some specific steps where i i knew i shouldn't say that but i'm going to say that anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> here's a great great question yeah. you, you good there uh miss natalie miss natalie watts says i got a question for pastor randy i've off. recently encountered two wonderful people who are Pentecostal oneness theology? What's the best loving? This is this is like modalism, right? It is. Mm -hmm. uh, explain. Why don't you start with modalism um, first? Modalism is the idea that the Trinity of the Triune God, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, it's one God who appears Manifest. sometimes as the Father, sometimes as the Son, sometimes as the Spirit. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they go even further though to a, a Jesus-only baptism. Um, yes. To, to them, as a critical component of salvation. Um, kind of a conditional thing. I, I don't. I, I'm Natalie. I know you're going to hate what I'm about to say. I don't. See, I'm I'm getting older, so I, I don't spend much time trying to persuade people that I believe are actually likely followers of Christ. If they have a differing point of doctrine that that's a a key issue to them, I'm not likely to even waste the time and energy to try to correct them. Now, if this is a friend and you guys have easy discussions about things that you differ yeah. over. Um, having, having said that, it is not an easy thing to counter um, a, a anything to do with the Trinity because we don't understand the so Trinity ourselves. Yeah. You know, we, we try to find examples. We can't find examples. So the I, egg. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The egg, the water, the steam, the ice, I mean, all, all those things. Hard nothing, boiled, soft boiled. Nothing. I mean, the truth Eggs is, benedict. the truth, if you really look at it, it's three distinct personages. They talk to one another, but they are unified in their attributes. They're unified in their, their purposes and plans. But they are three distinct persons, mm -hmm. but they want to be known as the one God. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to kind of leave it in, in yeah. this life. So, I, Natalie, I know I'm probably not giving you the answer you want. I don't know that I would bother, but if you want to, you, you, could, you could start combing all the references. Um, 
that have to do with the deity of Christ, the deity of the Holy Spirit, you know, and of course the deity of the Father is established. You could take some of the passages in Genesis where let us make man in our image, but even those are arguable because it could be talking to the divine council, mm -hmm. those mysterious 24 elder guys we see in the book of Revelation. So th these are not as easy to... to uh, it's not like you can anchor and, and like, ha, ah, here's the one verse that disputes this completely. You're right. never going to have to uh, address this again. It's, it's not that easy. Yeah. You do see conversations, though, that seem to go back and forth. It, within the triune God. Yeah. The Trinity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, so, so you, you in the Garden of Gethsemane? You, I, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. You can't get around the notion, the, the mental notion that comes into my mind. Three. Okay. We're three. We're yeah. distinct people. Mm -hmm. Um, so this being that we call God is actually three gods. Now, I'm, I'm just saying this is the mental image, mm -hmm. but want to be known because of their unity as, as one, one God. But it's, but I'm, I'm going to take that back because that makes me a heretic. <laughs> if you, if you dare say three gods, you're a heretic. One God eternally existed in three distinct personages. Person, yeah. 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 But completely unified in their, their uh, plans, purposes, identity, eternality, power, all, all those things. And that's about as much as we can grasp at this yeah. stage. Well, I mean, Garden of Gethsemane talking back, like, Father, let this cup pass from me. Absolutely. Uh, and it well, does it not appear multiple. to be. No, no, it, it's clearly. Well, how about <coughs> on, on the, the, the Mount of Transfiguration? The Father appears. This is my beloved Son. Listen to well, Him. Yeah. In whom I'm well pleased. But yeah, listen to Him. So... Yes, we can't we can't get around, and and uh, the spirit sometimes talks and say, tells people to do different things. Uh, the Lord was sending the spirit, he says, on his last yeah. night with his disciples. So, yeah, so it, it's not an easy concept. It's not an easy concept, concept, but there does appear. But it's clearly taught. Yeah, it, yeah, you see the baptism of Jesus, right, mm -hmm. where yep. God from heaven speaks to Jesus on earth. That it's not. Yeah. He's not talking to himself. Right. Absolutely. And, and he is not now manifest as yeah. himself on earth and is talking to no one in heaven. Yeah. So, Natalie, maybe that's a, I don't know if that helps you. I'm well, trying. Well, that might help her she, in her conversation with her friend. Yeah. Yeah. Having said that, they will have comebacks. And so I'm, I'm just trying to. Oh, okay, so, so, sometimes, they have answers for those questions. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's just not worth the hassle. And, Miss Paula <clears throat> says, your explanation or analogy to uh, is the best way I've heard it. My son shared it at school with classmates. There was another question that you had, Miss Paula, I saw earlier. I'm trying to get back there again. 5432. There it is. Can you explain the connections of the second return of Christ with the Jewish festivals, please? Mm -hmm. I was reading Leviticus, and it reminded me of a message you did a few months ago, but I couldn't remember what each festival means as far as prophecy goes. Yeah. Dun, dun. Uh, Jesus will return during the Feast of Trumpets. In other words, these mysterious feasts that the Lord gave to the nation Israel, they practiced them for 1,500 years. They didn't yeah. even know what didn't they were doing. Didn't know what they were doing. I love no. it. I love it. And then Jesus starts to fulfill them, you know, with, with his um, sacrificial death, his resurrection. And it's like, oh, now we get it. God had laid out his whole purpose right to the very end of the age in these feasts, in these festivals. So the ones that we're waiting now is the Feast of Trumpets. It's followed by the Day of Atonement and then the Feast of Tabernacles, which is where, you know, now the uh, millennial setup is, is actually mm -hmm. taking place. So those are the, the um, that, that's why I say to people, Jesus is going to return in the fall. Like, oh, you can't say that. It says nobody knows the day of the hour. I didn't say the day and the hour. I just said the fall because that's, yeah. when, <laughs> that's when that Feast yeah. of Trumpets is. God is going to con continue his plan just as he has in the past. It's awesome. I don't, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong, but it's either, did you say Phoebe? Emilio? It says, our Sundays have the new meaning ever since we begun worship at FCF Church. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. It's the best day of the week. I feel yeah. so blessed. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, look at that question. Renee Stoll is just curious. What's your stance on the rapture? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard this. Um, <laughs> quiet down now, people. I, this is a new topic for us. We don't want you to miss it. Sorry, we, Renee. Uh, he, he's, we, he's, we, we only have one, she, one chronological. She, one. She's joking, right? No. Not sure. Well, I bet uh -oh. she's new. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think she's sincere. Bless you, Miss yeah. Renee. Oh, yeah, I, I, I yeah, she might be messing with me. I don't know. <laughs> I, she actually looks familiar to me. <laughs> I feel like she looks like she could be a rascal. She might be putting me North, on. Lives in North Carolina. <laughs> okay, before no, you, before I, you, I'll give a serious. Before answer you go into an answer, answer, let's see. We we'll, we got other questions we can answer. Mm -hmm. Miss Miss Renee, are are you new to FCF? Is this? It says a, she lives in North Carolina on her. 
when you clicked on her. I have that. Yeah, but I mean, she could be watching online. Yeah, yeah. So no, let's I mean, see. I just think, yeah. cool. What? Right. Go. You can you can dive in. Go oh, ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we Bang. Bang. we only have one single chronological reference to what is called the rapture. You have to understand what the rapture is. The rapture is the first resurrection. First Corinthians 15, First Thessalonians 4, Revelation 20. They all call it the first resurrection. Well, Jesus says that it's it occurs after Matthew 24, verse 29 through 31, after, after the, the tribulation, tribulation of those days. days. What you have is the trump sounding, the same trump in 1 Corinthians 15, the same trump you have in 1 Thess Thessalonians 4. But it says it's actually <clears throat> the angels that will lift up the living believers. They, we, we will instantaneously, at the second coming of Christ, receive our resurrection bodies. Okay, So those that have already died in the Lord, their spirit body, for want of a better term, is in heaven. It will now be given a physical resurrection body at the return of Christ, which is after the tribulation. So what we call the rapture is just the living believers are instantaneously transformed and we receive our resurrection body. And Jesus tells us exactly when it happens after the tribulation of those days. The pre-tribulational teaching is something that's very modern and it doesn't have one single solid scripture to stand on. It's all based on supposition. Oh, Jesus wouldn't let his church go through trouble. He wouldn't have his people go through wrath. Yeah, 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 it's all these things. And yet you can prove again and again and again, if you read the Bible carefully, that, that's just, it isn't so. Uh, all through the book of Revelation, you got Christians being persecuted <laughs> and they're being killed. Heads, that, get, heads that, getting chopped off. Say, say that part again. Somebody is there. You know? There's even a point where we're supposed to remain strong and firm and, and steadfast exactly. in the middle of the persecution. Now, what the pre trippers would say is that, oh, that's the people that got saved after the rapture. It's like, yeah. yeah. On the other hand, they want to say, but the Spirit of God leaves at the rapture. So how are these people getting saved? How come more got saved after the rapture when the Spirit's not here? And I, I mean, yeah. don't get me started. But No, I mean, it's... But a, anyhow. Okay, how about this? Now, now you, having you, said that, if you're pre-trib, mid-trib, uh, pre-wrath rapture, I'm cool with all those positions. I don't, I don't think they're accurate, but you're orthodox. You're, you're, you're not yeah. being uh, heretical. Wiser people than us have disagreed on it. Yes. Okay. Um, you, you have done a Bible Institute on it. If it's possible, mm -hmm. the powers... Of hey! Joshua Go actually jo used the... Drop it in the oh, there you go. Thanks, Joshua. <laughs> the Great Deception. Oh, there it is. Standing yeah. firm. Time to Deception. Bible Institute. Pastor Randy. doesn't have the link, but he does explain how to Come on, there. Joshua. You were yeah. so close. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you finish the new backgrounds in 4K? Just when we went 4K, I'm curious. Drop it in there. Are you coming over today? There they hey, are. Miss that. Faith, she's awesome. Man, she's, she's so sweet. She's tricky. She is. Look at how, how does she do that so fast like that? That's she magical. Is. I agree with Annette. Annette, I just hope our resurrected right. bodies are 25. I think they will be that whatever Jesus. <laughs> here's what I think. Whatever Jesus' age was, which is probably 30 to 33. Um, that's what I suspect our resurrection bodies yeah. will be. But think about it, man. When you're 30, 33, I was pretty at my best, man. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. But this is going to be better than our best. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's the resurrection body. So for 40, you can eat chocolate cake all day long and not gain an ounce. You get more muscular. Mm, come on now. <laughs> so Bill just wants clarification, Bill Why? So what you're saying is that we get rapture before the tribulation, right? <laughs> <laughs> And he loves our heats. <laughs> Bill's probably driving between draw, jobs. He means hearts. <laughs> yeah, your heart. Jobs. Yes. Anyhow. Yes, I broke my leg. Alrighty. No broken legs in heaven. No, no. Dummy. No. No. Oh. I did something yeah, there. Somebody just, I clicked Whoa. on a link by accident. Wow, you, you did Miss a, lot Anita of, Coons. a lot of steps. Better than our best. Better than our best. Amen. Yes. Have on my dance moves, Miss Anita. You saw me. I was cutting a rug over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you want me to ask Ross's question? Yeah, there was yes. a dance party going on in the uh, kids' theater. So oh, Ross's wow. group, he says... And I missed out. You Imagine did. That. I'm going to get you over there next time. <laughs> in our growth group last night, the issue of inerrancy came up. What Ooh. would be your definition? We discussed, and certainly the original... We discussed that... <coughs> we discussed that certainly the original books were inerrant, but what about today's translations, Ross asks? Yeah, I, I'd rather answer that, that part of it. I, I think they probably have an understanding that inerrancy is the idea that the Spirit of God guided the writers. They used their own humanity, their writing skills, but, but the Spirit of God caused the words, um, plenary you know, inerrancy, the, the exact words in the original manuscripts and so forth. But what about the, the 
translations that we have today because that's the fear people have it's like oh man what's the right translation you know because i, I don't want to get deceived um here's the truth the the core truths we need to know about god and about life are repeated so frequently in scripture you cannot miss them yeah okay let's think about it what, what what's the core issue that I, as a human being, am reconciled to God. I come to return to put trust in Christ, my Creator, and become His follower. He promises forgiveness, everlasting life. Yeah. Those things are so clear that whether it's the King James or whether it's the NLT or, or whatever version you read, they are crystal clear. They're redundant. They're repeated again and again. So first of all, the paranoia that some people have about, oh, man, do we have the right version? It's got to be the King James only or, you know, or the NASB or something like that. It's no, 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 no. The, these, are, these, TV. Yeah. No. <laughs> the, the, these are all good translations, and, and we don't have to be fearful that we're going to miss the truth. The truth is huge. God, do you think that God would, <laughs> would set us up to where, like, oh, man, you, you, should, have the read wrong the, book. <laughs> you should have read the King Jimmy. Now you're, you're in going. trouble now. <laughs> Take the elevator mark down. Yeah, right. <laughs> So um, I, I know people are being sincere about this, but all of our modern translations are good. There are some that are further out. They're, they're more like a paraphrase. Yeah. And, you know, but, but even those, you're not going to miss the core ideas. You can't. You just Because God has put it where they're so repeated in so many different ways and so many angles, you cannot miss the, the key truths. Yeah. Uh, Miss Phoebe says, whoopsies. Ms. Phoebe says, how do you hold your faith and Christian values when you're surrounded by folks who not only believe in Christ, but look at you like you're an alien if you are <laughs> even mentioned yeah. going to church? Um, I, I think we have to remind ourselves of some of the things Jesus said that, you know, yeah. we, we should expect to be treated like outsiders, perhaps even mocked, ridiculed, persecuted, and that we should take that as an honor, a, 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 bad of, a badge of, of, of uh, honor. First uh, Peter four talks about the same thing, that if you're you're left out of things, um, that it should still be considered that that's because you're you're being faithful and people can hear your devotion to Christ and see your devotion to Christ. But it's normative, and um, it it really shouldn't shake us. It, it, the, the illustration I like to use is is if somebody were to ask us our name, we would respond quite confidently, and if the person said, "Well, that's not really your name." People say, that's ridiculous. It is my name. Well, if I'm a follower of Christ, I'm a Christian, that's that's who I am. You can say what you want. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have yeah. to like my lifestyle, but yeah. I, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to become yeah. beaten down by that. I'm not going to be hurt. I'm not going to be wounded. This is who I am, you know. Yeah. So I, I think the more we can get our heads kind of clear like that, th there there is an adjustment to expectations. If, if okay. All of us would like to be liked by everybody all the time, but that is just not possible. Even Jesus was not liked. By, even Jesus was not liked by everybody all the time. <laughs> uh, Why are so, you tapping me, boss? I don't know, what are you man. Trying to say like this weird thing that happens, <laughs> happens in my head. head. <laughs> what he's saying is that I want everyone to like me. Well, so do I. <laughs> but that I, I have I've issues. gotten over it earlier. <laughs> But I need to accept that in leadership at times, quiet down now, I'm processing, I'm, I'm spinning a yarn here. <laughs> From one insult to the next, Miss Anita, when I said that I was dancing earlier and I could cut a rug, Pastor Kim, you want to read the response? Hmm, not sure I would be bringing too much attention to that, Pastor Pete. You were off feet a bit. We'll chalk it up to the limp. <laughs> You were you were like a sister to me, Anita. <laughs> uh, Miss Lisa Bradenberg says, "Hey Kim, I have a question. What does the marbles mean on Palm Sunday?" <laughs> That's like, is this a sincere question? No. I, I don't know. Okay. No, I think oh, she's joking. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe maybe, say, maybe no, not. Kind of the most the message. Of I'm sure y'all don't want me to say it all again. So. No, the premise is. I remember no, please the, do. <laughs> remember the conversation about the, if Pastor Randy says there's there's two ounces of water in this jug. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, there's two ounces of water in there, as opposed to us actually measuring it for ourselves. And that was the marbles, counting right. the marbles. Yes. Right. Personal conviction. Count the marbles yourself. Yes. Is she being facetious? Well, I don't know. Can, can I just... Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think that... Should we let him? Uh, uh, it was your illustration. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. As Christians, particularly as a new Christian, we, we have to trust 
those that have gone before us, they've studied the Word of God, and so they tell us a lot of things. We, we take their word. We say, these are good people. They're, they're followers of Christ. I'm going to just trust in what they say. But then as time goes on, we should go back and study the Word for ourselves, spend the time in God's presence, so that now we, we're not just taking their word. It's not just a download of information. Right, right. It's something we have seen it now in the presence of God to the point that it's now a conviction yeah. that, that you could never shake us on this. And, of course, experience adds to that. The more we obey God, the more we have the evidence of life experience, and that makes us unshakable as well. Yeah. But counting the marbles, it's, it's that taking that step of my church teaches me this, my, yeah. my pastor teaches me that. That's okay. It's not bad. But I want you to take that second step, and you will be so blessed. You'll be shocked if you start sitting in the presence of God and you start asking him, you know, Father, help me to see this the way you want me to see it. Help me to know the why behind mm -hmm. the what. You ask mm -hmm. these questions, you wait, and you'll, you'll just be knocked out by how God will show you his heart as well as um, the applications of his truth that you won't see in any other way, or at least not easily. I shared that story about that guy named Richard, but thought of so many, like the, the people in leadership, mm -hmm. pastors in our world today who are deconstructing, you know, oh, and it's, it's terrible. that whole thing, like yes. they kind of grew up in it, just surrounded by never it. Never owned then, it. But yes. never. The information was downloaded yeah. in them. They could, they could even parent it back, it. Yeah. but it, it never, never internalized. It was never internalized. Yeah, obviously yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to go ahead and on that note, mm. at 104, why does it say peach a lot? Yup. Because um, Miss Phoebe was you? saying how to process. You? No, I, I commented that. While you're talking, I'm reading and typing stuff over <laughs> oh, here, okay. clicking on buttons. Okay. It looks like I, I'm a space cadet because my eyes are up, glazed over uh, as if I have somehow drifted into nah, oblivion. Man, but. You're, you're, you can juggle a lot of balls. You're a plate spinner. <laughs> so Miss Phoebe said, she shared a question about people who struggle with their faith or make fun yeah. of you. And then Miss Kathy Kiske said, Yet these are the same people who will come to you, and when something goes wrong, uh, they're the ones that are asking you for prayer, yeah. and all of a sudden it's the faith super, is it's a super good. Point. When, hey, can when, you bring lift one up for me? Yeah. And, and then I commented, "Yup." <laughs> okay. I got so, you. and this is interesting. Anytime there's a major crisis, that this is, it's it's sad, but when there's a major crisis, churches are flocked with people. Yeah, it's true. Because they yeah. all of a sudden they realize, yeah, you know, you're uh, one point. Five kids, your dog, and your home, and your car aren't going to get you someplace. And, and, hey, and, and there, 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 there is a good, buddy. Yes, there is a, good, for you, a good side of that because some people authentically wake up. It does take yeah. a shock, a jolt of reality sometimes. Yes. Reachable mo moment. Yeah, and, and not not everybody because uh, I mean, nine eleven was a classic example. The churches were flooded, mm -hmm. but then two weeks later they were right back where they were. You know, so sometimes people panic. They run toward God. But then when things get normal, they, they walk away. But not everybody. Some people, that's the yeah, turning point. Right. Well, we're going to, we can pick up any other questions um, next week. What we are going to do is go get ready for our Christmas, no, no. <laughs> Easter, yes, yes, services. And like we said, plan to come early. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm fastened on this one question. And I don't know what the holy sprite is. I've I drank sprite. sprite yeah. I've drank sprite in the name of spirit. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. And and that question, Lisa, maybe you could send that in to questions at fcfchurch.com with a little bit more explanation of what you're asking. Because yes. that's big and broad. So. Yes, it's it's a little hard. Yeah, we're not to, like what is it? But it helps to know asking? that it's not a drink. It's right. it's not, 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 it's not coke, spirit. it's not what, when you ask, if we were to try to answer this question right now, we might answer it in a completely different yes. way than you intended. Yeah. And, and what does it mean we'll about the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? What does what mean? Yeah, yeah if, if something a little more specific. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Question but it's a, at FCF but it's, it sounds like it's a good question. Look at all, all of our faces are very serious there. Give me your most yeah. serious face you can, Pastor Randy. Mm. You know, mm. We're thinking. All right. 9.15. Actually, I just look tired. 11.15. I just look tired all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Nine, 9 15, 11 15. That that Look at, they're dying there. Us making dumb faces and all of a sudden viewership went up in the comments. Give them one more. Give them one more serious face. You want to see it? Mm. I can't even do it. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Give me a, a, give, me a, give, me a give me a second. This is gonna be Q and A next week. You have to do this. You gotta. Okay, here we go. Try it real quick, real quick, real serious. All right. I always look angry. <laughs> you look 
terrifying. Like, if I saw you in a dark alley, I'd run. <laughs> All right. Until you Don't, realized I was just look at, about... Like, give the people what they want. <laughs> Until you realized I was just about a midget. <laughs> Oh, I'm curious, Miss Phoebe. Uh, how long have you guys been coming to SCF? Because I don't think yeah. I think I shook your hand once, but uh, it's it's great great to have you jump on with us here. It's nice to meet hey, you. Andrea, hi Andrew. Service will begin. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss the beginning of service. You don't want to miss the beginning of service. You will miss one of the best parts of the entire service for sure. We're starting with a bang, much like our Christmas Eve service. Don't miss. And I, I'm actually going to tell you, I believe if you show up after 9 o'clock, the auditorium will be full. Yeah. So do your best to get here early. If you're coming with a group, come, and we're going to open doors, like I said, about a half hour ahead of time. Love to get you in there. And uh, there'll be hosts and stuff in the lobby, some treats waiting for you. It's going to be one of the best services of the whole year. So love to see you there. Anything else we should tell them? I can't think of a thing. Come early and bring and bring a friend. Nine fifteen, eleven fifteen service starts. Come about a half hour half hour ahead of time. We love you, FCF. We will see you there.